Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I'm going to start this video off with a question. Is there a piece of mature software out there improving at a faster rate than Blender? Because I can't think of one, to be honest. Maybe the Godot game engine, but oh man, Blender is improving rapidly, and 3.2 was just released. Now, interestingly enough, I did a video about 3.2 a while back, and one of the big new features, the... Uh, the hair didn't seem to make it into this release, but there is quite a bit here to like. Uh, it is available for download right now. Just head on over to blender.org. The download links are up and going. Uh, their servers do generally get hit pretty hard on release day, which today is. So if you can't get it to download, what you probably want to do is go to uh, Steam to download it there. Steam is generally pretty reliable, and I think it's already updated. So uh, Blender 3.2, what is in it? What made the cut? Well, one of the first new things is Light Group. So if you're doing renders in Cycle. Uh, cycles, it's a way of having multiple render paths with different configurations of lighting. So for example, here you can see a combined lighting, the interior lighting alone, the pool lighting, the bench lighting, the world lighting, and then you can work with them all together. So when you're working in the compositor, you can treat each set of light groups as a different entity. So if you're doing rendering and you have multiple light setups, you're probably going to appreciate that one. We also have improvements to the shadow caustics. Now, I love the fact that Blender makes such good release notes. It makes it really easy to illustrate uh, what has changed. So you see the caustics before, definitely look at, watch that light there. So that's probably the best example you're gonna see. Watch it as it bends and then watch it come around. So we've got improved caustics, and let's just go full on improve mode. Uh, so you're definitely getting, uh, so this is selective rendering of caustics in shadows of refractive objects. Um, so you get improvements to them. Uh, we've got uh, volume motion blur. So there's support for motion blur for gas simulations and imported VDB volumes. Now VDB volumes are absolutely massive. I recently covered a program called Embergen that can create VDBs. These are basically particle clouds. Uh, and now you can do motion blur on them. I got a number of other improvements for cycles, including for example, GPU rendering for Linux. I'm not gonna go into all of the smaller things. We're gonna stick to uh, the, the higher stuff here. Now, interestingly enough, support for baking to UDIM tiles is nice. Udim is a way of having uh, multiple multiple textures on the same object. Uh, it is very good for uh, high resolution game texturing. Um, we've got a lot of improvements to the painting tools. So this is definitely a nice area. So we've got a new paintbrush tool. You can see it in action right here. Comes with a bunch of new settings like tip shape, wet mixing, flow, and density. So basically Blender is turning into a painting application sort of along the lines of like fractal painter. It's very impressive to see and you can do some really cool results with it so you can paint directly on the vertices of your objects. You do not need to untexture to use the painting tools. There is also a new high performance smear brush. Um, let's see the smear brush in action here. So again, you're getting basically full blown painting application in Blender, very impressive. You now have the ability to do uh, create masks on the fly with the new color mask tool. Uh, we've got the new color filter tool uh, to apply various effects on unmasked areas, adjust hue, value, saturation, contrast, or even smooth. So not only is like, so we got grease pencil here that turned it into a really powerful 2D animation system. Well, now we're getting into like natural media painting type stuff here with these improvements. I wasn't really expecting it to go that way. Uh, remeshing. Uh, so now when using the voxel remesher, all color attributes are preserved. So it's perfect to color your sculpts as you still experiment and block out the general shapes. So as you change the resolution and such of the mesh, all of the, um, when you go to a different size and change things out, all of the texture work you did directly on the vertices transfers over. Definitely nice in that regard. Uh, mask out, masking, um, auto masking and face sets are fully supported with the color attribute painting. So uh, you now have the ability to basically paint directly on your geometry. You don't need to worry about things like UV uh, maps, at least not initially, which is definitely nice. Now, one of the big things with the recent releases of Blender is geometry nodes. Uh, so we've got uh, improvements there. Uh, we've got a new duplicate elements, a new node creates new geometry with specific elements, point, edge, face, spline, or instance, uh, combined with geometry to instance node that can be used to create a basic efficient array operation. Uh, we have asset collections. Uh, so asset browser, I think was added in 3.0 and continues to improve. So you expand your asset library with collections. You add collection assets as instances or real objects. Thumbnails are automatically generated or customized it with your own. So you basically you can think of a collection like if you're from the Unity or Unreal Engine world, basically the equivalent of a prefab. Um, so the asset library is definitely getting nicer. So if you're using a lot of reusable assets, uh, that should be a nice thing to you. And also got in the modeling side of things, the new curve pen tool. So you quickly add, delete, and tweak control points, hold modifier keys to switch the handle types. 
so between like, like the Bezier control points, etc. cetera. Um, so it should make drawing curves uh, a smoother and easier process. Uh, this is really neat. If you're doing grease pencil work, it's the new envelope modifier. Uh, so it connects all points that are end points apart, a shape known as an envelope. So you can see it in action over here. You can do some really neat special effects with using this new envelope uh, tool. Number of other improvements for grease pencil as well, including uh, scale stroke thickness in the pie menu. Uh, and keep shape in the smooth modifier. Uh, in terms of the video sequencers, we got enhanced channels. So organize your edits by giving channels a name. You can also mute and unlock entire channels and a number of other improvements to the video editor as well and a bunch of more stuff. So again, the only thing that really kind of seems glaringly missing here is the hair system. And that was kind of the coolest thing, to be honest. Uh, but we do have the new lighting features. Uh, EV got some improvements. Animation and riggings have some improvements. User air, and the improvements to UI, uh, library, and core stuff, et cetera. And another thing that is kind of really relevant to the world of game development, I covered this, I think, in my uh, beta video. Uh, there is an all new C or C++, I think it was C, a written object importer. It's supposed to be magnitudes faster than the old one and it's supposed to work better as well. So if you're opening uh, Wavefront object files, uh, that new importer should be very nice. We also have uh, th the relatively small improvements, but we've got improvements to the FBX importer as well and exporter. Uh, so FBX IO is very important in the world of game development. We may not like that format, but it is one of the most important formats out there. Uh, so improvements to the way it works, definitely nice as well. Uh, we've also got support for WebB, WebP images. If you want to come in and check out the full release notes, I will have this both of these linked in the linked article down below. Uh, you can get into full uh, details right here on all of the various different things that made into this particular release. Um, a pretty impressive release. And again, I go back to my original question. Is there a program out there that is improving at a faster rate than Blender? Uh, I can't think of too many contenders, uh, but I would be interested in hearing your opinion on that. What you think of Blender in general, the 3.2 release specifically, let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.